after defeating the demon frog and destroyed the demon realm. Wan Ling fulfilled Er Hai's request by creating a new world for the demons to inhabit. He also allowed Er Hai to stay in the human world as his pet dog. Some time later, Wan Ling was seen diligently studying in his room, prompting Er Hai's curiosity about his sudden dedication to academics with his laptop. Jin Ke then explained to Er Hai that Wan Ling was developing the Way of Heaven programming from the trick of Grand forgetting to conceal his identity as the Immortal King, as soon Rong had discovered his true power. Wan Ling was reluctant to directly use the trick of Grand Forgetting because it had quite dangerous consequences. After completing the Way of Heaven program, Wan Ling then transferred a portion of his power to a tiny spiritual creature named Sha Yan, who scanned and stored the program into a database, eliminating the need for Wan Ling to resort to the trick of Grand Forgetting in the future. However, Urha began to question Wan Ling's abilities and regarded Sha Yan as a toy because ultimately, nothing in the universe, including Wang Ling, could rival the supremacy of the Way of Heaven. The next day, as Wang Ling was getting ready for school, he received a text from Sun Rong, sending him a morning greeting. They then discussed the upcoming exam, but Sun Rong also expressed concern about Wang Ling's incredible power. Wanting to avoid drawing attention at school, Wang Ling assured Sun Rong that he would restrain himself from using his power. He was also relieved that Sun Rong only knew about his power reaching the incarnation phase, indicating she was unaware of his identity as the Immortal King. Shortly after, Wang Ling's father, Wang Jiu, approached him to show him a new weapon created from the Way of Heaven programming. Wang Jiu explained that the weapon could be activated by mentioning a specific passphrase, but he accidentally activated the weapon, which then caused him to lose consciousness for some time. Shortly after Wang Jiu regained consciousness, Wang Ling quickly retrieved the weapon, having already understood its workings from his father before Wang Zhou lost his memory. Upon reaching school, Wang Ling overheard his classmate Chan Chiu eagerly discussing their upcoming physical art class with a new teacher. Chan Chao was very curious about their new teacher's abilities and intended to showcase his skills as a member of the renowned Chen family known for their martial arts prowess. However, his best friend Gu Hao warned him not to underestimate their teacher because the masters who taught at their school had at least reached the golden pill phase, which certainly indicated that Chan Chao was nothing compared to the masters. Despite this, Chan Chao remained confident in his potential for growth. Shortly after, their homeroom teacher, Master Pan, arrived and informed them that their physical art teacher couldn't come to teach them today because he was sick. At the same time, a man appeared to enter the classroom, but Master Pan immediately closed the door with her power saying to the students that they would have swordsmanship class under the guidance of Master Wang. Upon learning this, Chan Chou felt disheartened and lost his earlier enthusiasm, while Wang Ling seemed to have anticipated it because he had been busy developing and completing the Way of Heaven program last night. With his father's weapon, Wang Ling hoped that he could get through today peacefully without any incidents that could cause massive damage. Later, the students gathered in the school's newly renovated gym, with the elite class students and the other students also came to the gym to train their skills. At that moment, Gu Hao and his friends were admiring the gym, which had been renovated to be better and sturdier with the funding from Sun Rong's wealthy family. Shortly after, Master Wang arrived while carrying something. Before starting the lesson, he introduced the legendary swordmaster Fun Ru, whose existence was previously unknown. Master Wang explained that Fun Ru had mastered Way of Heaven level swordsmanship from a young age even though the technique was very difficult to master, even by the immortals. When the students inquired about the power of those who reached the Way of Heaven level, Master Wang clarified that they could effortlessly destroy mountains and seas if they reached the Tenth Phase or the Way of Heaven Phase. Upon hearing this, the students were filled with excitement, discussing the greatness of Fun Ru. However, Hu Hao appeared doubtful, considering that academy students like them might not have the opportunity to learn Fun Ru's swordsmanship. Nevertheless, Master Wang surprised them by revealing the Wordless Book, a precious treasure of Faction 60 that was previously believed to be just a rumor. Master Wang then demonstrated how the book worked by channeling his spiritual power in both palms, then placing his hands onto the book while concentrating to focus his heart and mind simultaneously. After that, the Wordless Book would analyze their spiritual power based on the basic abilities they had learned and recommend the suitable swordsmanship magic wares. With the range of sword skills learning is from 1 to 5 levels, and with his basic abilities, Master Wang had successfully reached the 5th level. Although not all students could learn swordsmanship from the wordless book, Master Wang gave them the opportunity to try using it 
because it was a rare opportunity. The first student to attempt using the wordless book was Ku Swan, who eagerly aimed to be the first to succeed. However, Ku Swan faced disappointment as he failed to breach the barrier of the wordless book and was thrown back easily. Witnessing this, Master Wang cautioned the students about the risks involved, warning that those with low basic abilities, like Ku Swan, could lose consciousness or suffer hair loss, even experience instant baldness. Upon hearing that, some students hesitated to attempt the test after seeing Ku Swan's outcome, fearing they might experience the same fate. However, Chen Chao, showing confidence, stepped forward to give it a try. Being the future heir of the Chen family, Chen Chao displayed impressive basic abilities, enabling him to reach the third level to learn swordsmanship from the book. Master Wang then praised Chen Chao as a talented student, and Chen Chao instantly felt proud of himself for receiving praise from Master Wang. Following this, Master Wang called upon Wan Ling to use the wordless book, explaining that they had purchased special insurance to ensure the safety of the wordless book as the most valuable treasure of Faction 60, because Wan Ling always caused incidents that led to the destruction of school buildings or facilities. Soon Rong then inquired about insurance coverage for the newly renovated gym, but Master Wang assured her that the gym was constructed with the finest materials, and he was very sure that Wang Ling couldn't destroy the building. Aware of his potential lack of control over his power, Wang Ling asked Jing Kei to lend him his power, because the power ratio between Jing Kei and his own power was 1 to 100. Even with Jing Kei's assistance, Wang Ling could easily reach the Way of Heaven level swordsmanship, causing the building to collapse and summoning a massive celestial sword from the sky. Upon seeing that, spectators were amazed at Wang Ling's unexpected display of power, considering him previously weak. Realizing his mistake, Wang Ling instructed Master Wan to ensure all school property and facilities, and then used Jin Kei to destroy the giant celestial sword. Shortly after, Wang Ling used the art of ultimate restoration technique to rebuild the destroyed building and also used his father's weapon to erase everyone's memory of the incident. However, Sun Rong was too close to Wang Ling when he activated the weapon, causing Sun Rong to faint due to the weapon's bright flash. Concerned, Master Wang urged Wang Ling to quickly take Sun Rong to the infirmary for treatment. In another location, an old man appeared to be astonished at the appearance of the celestial sword from the sky. His own sword, which also witnessed to event, then congratulated the old man because after so long, the old man finally found someone who could be his successor as the immortal sword master, especially someone who could reach the way of heaven level swordsmanship and summon a celestial sword. The old man was delighted because the location of the Celestial Sword's appearance was in the area where the Shadow Faction had been destroyed, leading him to believe that the individual who successfully reached the Way of Heaven-level swordsmanship was the same person who destroyed the Shadow Faction. Realizing his time was short, the old man resolved to find his successor without delay. The scene then shifted to show a secret gathering where Fun Ru and Chan Nun Swan, the legendary Grandmasters, were being worshipped. Members of the gathering prostrated themselves before a painting of Chan Nun Swan, indicating their deep respect for the Grandmaster. Shortly after, the leader of the gathering then inquired about King Zhou's absence from the meeting. One of the members explained that King Zhou was on an important mission, although in reality, King Zhou was observing his score in the Swordsmanship Simulator game, where he had achieved the highest score and held the first position for the past 30 years. The scene then shifts to Sun Rong receiving a medical examination at her home conducted by Dr. Li at the request of her grandfather, Sun Ni Yuan. Sun Ni Yuan is deeply worried about Sun Rong's condition because she suddenly fainted at school. Sun Ni Yuan thought that Sun Rong might be exhausted from pushing herself too hard to study, especially since Sun Rong had been very enthusiastic about learning many things since childhood and had achieved perfect grades. Sun Rong was also a high-achieving student who always received many awards, to the point where the trophies and certificates couldn't fit in their home anymore. As Li sighed, Sun Rong and her grandfather thought that she might have a fatal illness, but Li reassured them that Sun Rong was fine. Li explained that Sun Rong might be experiencing stress from focusing too much on studying at school, so he suggested to Sun Mi Yuan to take Sun Rong to a sanitarium on Chrysanthemum Island. Li added that the sanitarium was established by his master, who wanted to provide better medical services for cultivators in the city. Although the sanitarium was still under construction due to lack of funds, Li guaranteed that Sun Rong could use the fully completed experience area. Upon learning that, Sun Yi Yuan eagerly typed on his phone, 
while Lee switched on the TV to watch breaking news about the Sun family fully funding the sanitarium project on Chrysanthemum Island, realizing the dream of providing better medical services to the public as envisioned by their master. The next day, Wang Ling prepared to visit Sun Rong, but his mother advised him to change his attire and handed him a bag of gifts for Sun Rong, because she knew that Wang Ling would visit Sun Rong. Although Wang Ling was supposed to go with his friends, they were occupied with their own responsibilities, like Gu Hao who had to manage the store because his parents were on a business trip, and Lin Shoudyu who had to work part-time. While Chan Cho claimed that he had to complete an important mission in the online game he was playing, so they decided to appoint Wang Ling as their representative to visit Sun Rong. Long story short, Wang Ling finally arrived at the sanitarium accompanied by Er Ha, and Sun Rong was delighted to see them. Meanwhile, Sun Yi Yuan monitored his granddaughter through CCTV cameras placed around the sanitarium. Despite his bodyguard's suggestion to use a headset to eavesdrop on Sun Rong and Wang Ling's conversation, Sun Yi Yuan declined, confident that Wang Ling posed no threat to his granddaughter. This was also confirmed by Ir Ha, who then revealed good things about Wang Ling, but the bodyguard seemed unhappy to hear that because he actually harbored romantic feelings for Sun Rong, who was his childhood friend. Meanwhile, Sun Rong was delighted to receive gifts from her friends but grew curious about Wang Ling's gift. He then took a water bottle from the bag and heated water inside the bottle, leading Sun Rong to believe that Wang Ling was giving her a healing potion. But Wang Ling actually just gave her regular hot water. Seeing her disappointment, Wang Ling offered her a limited edition pack of instant noodles, which was his precious thing. After that, Sun Rong informed Wang Ling that she would undergo a recovery test and invited him to accompany her for a recovery test, as she heard it was enjoyable. They proceeded to the experience area, where various games awaited them, and Sun Rong was instructed to create a special ID to access all the games in the facility. Her first challenge was a dynamic visual data test involving a claw machine game. Despite not passing the test, she received a decent grade of B+, indicating her vision was normal. Sun Rong then asked Wang Ling to try the game. But the jealous bodyguard, intended to embarrass Wang Ling, instructed the administrator to make the game challenging for him. When Wang Ling attempted to play, the claw suddenly spun on its own, which made Sun Rong think that the machine might be broken. However, Wang Ling seemed not to care about it and continued the game until he managed to retrieve a lot of toys from the machine and achieve the highest score. Not only that, the test results showed that Wang Ling's vision was extraordinary, as he managed to get an SR plus score. Upon witnessing this, the bodyguard suspected Wang Ling of cheating and promptly informed Sun Yi Yuan. However, Sun Yi Yuan disagreed, asserting that Wang Ling's exceptional performance was due to his genuinely remarkable vision, which reminded him of his own youth when his vision was similarly excellent. In contrast, Er had disagreed with Sun Yi Yuan's words because, after all, no one in the world could match Wang Ling, either in the past or in the future. Moving on to the agility test, once again, Wan Ling continued to impress Sun Rong and her grandfather with his abilities as he achieved perfect results that surpassed the maximum score. Despite the bodyguard's irritation at the damaged machines, Sun Yi Yuan commended Wan Ling and reminisced about his own youthful prowess. Furthermore, he instructed the bodyguard to replace the machines with newer, safer models. Frustrated by Sun Yi Yuan's continual defense of Wang Ling, the bodyguard instructed the administrator to maximize the game difficulty. Yet, Wang Ling effortlessly attained the highest score once again. When Wang Ling effortlessly scored a basket from a far distance, Erva commented that Wang Ling was another version of Slam Dunk. However, Sun Yi Yuan disagreed because he knew that Wang Ling used his spiritual power on the basketball. On the other hand, King Jiu grew annoyed as his game records were surpassed by an ID named AGAN, which turned out to be Sun Rong's ID used by Wang Ling. In the final game, Jing Kate asked Wang Ling to restrain his power, but Wang Ling easily broke the machine without using any power. This further frustrated King Zhou, as his records were surpassed again by AGAN, and angered the bodyguard as Wang Ling destroyed more machines. Later, Wang Ling exchanged his game coins for a doll and gifted it to Sun Rong. Meanwhile, King Zhao struggled to surpass AGN's record, growing increasingly frustrated and determined to defeat it. While heading home, Er Hei informed Wang Ling about King Zhao, who might seek revenge for Wang Ling surpassing his record. Er Hei also explained that King Zhao was a member of the villainous Four Emblems faction, a division of the Infinite Sword faction. However, Wang Ling seemed unconcerned, 
since he also knew that Urha had managed to rank third in the highest score in the Swordsmanship Simulator game. Later, during another meeting of the Four Emblems faction, their leader Song Wu appeared annoyed by King Zhou's absence. One member named Su Hu informed him that King Zhou was on a mission to eliminate someone who had embarrassed their faction. Hearing this, Song Wu wondered about the challenger, while King Zhou seemed to be heading to confront Sun Rong, the owner of the AGN ID that surpassed his record. At school, Master Wang and Master Pan were engaged in a heated debate due to their differing opinions on the physical art lesson. Master Wang believed that students should study physical art more seriously to prepare themselves for real battles, but Master Pan disagreed. During their argument, an old man arrived and expressed his interest in applying for the position of physical art teacher at the school. Master Wang immediately recognized him as a sword saint, especially after witnessing 10% of his spiritual power. When Master Wang inquired about his motives, the old man, known as Master Yi, explained that he sought an hair and believed he could find one at the school. Master Yi had observed the celestial sword and aimed to pass on his legendary swordsmanship. Although Master Wang seemed to agree to accept Master Yi as the physical art teacher, he informed that Master Yi must defeat Master Pan in a duel to secure the position. Upon seeing Master Yi, Sun Rong and Gu Hao harbored doubts due to his age and frail appearance while Chan Chao speculated that Master Yi might be a formidable master concealing his true strength. On the contrary, Wang Lin quickly recognized Master Yi as a renowned swordmaster and pondered his purpose for visiting their school. Jing Kei speculated that a master like him might be seeking another successor, possibly among the students. However, Wang Lin remained indifferent to this because he thought that his swordsmanship was not superior to the other students in the school despite Master Yi's interest being piqued by the heavenly sword that Wang Ling summoned. Meanwhile, Wang Ling observed King Zhou's movements, from the mini formation he drew in his book, because he had apparently learned that King Zhou intended to kill Sun Rong. King Zhou, who was on his way to Faction 60 and using GPS for navigation, seemed surprised when he received a notification about someone monitoring him through CCTV cameras, even though he was currently flying over the ocean. Shortly after, Chan Chao and his friends met Master Yi on the school field, where he demonstrated his spiritual power, impressing everyone except Wang Lin, who remained unmoved. Chan Chao grew increasingly convinced of Master Yi's legendary status, because he could levitate in the air with his spiritual power. Chan Chao and Gu Ho became eager to learn physical art, but felt discouraged when they realized their schedule was already full with Master Pan's lessons. Meanwhile, Sun Rong contemplated the possibility of learning from Master Yi after a brief discussion with him. The next day, Sun Rong and Wang Ling visited Master Pan in the teacher's lounge and told her that they had been waiting for her to teach in their class because they missed her. Delighted by their enthusiasm, Master Pan agreed to resume teaching the elite class. As she was about to have lunch, Chan Chao and Wang Ling suddenly came to see her, reaffirming their desire to learn and excel requesting Master Pan to teach them as students from the elite class. Because Master Pan's strong dedication to teaching, she agreed to Chan Chao's request to instruct them, even though it meant sacrificing her lunch break. Several hours later, as Master Pan was about to rest in her office, exhausted from teaching, Go Hao and Wang Ling approached her, seeking guidance on refining vitality pills. Despite her fatigue, Master Pan questioned whether the students ever felt wearied from constant studying. But Gu Hao affirmed that they were students from the elite class, so they always had to be enthusiastic about learning to become the best cultivators in the country. Reluctantly, Master Pan agreed to their request. Afterward, feeling drained, she hurriedly locked herself in the teacher's lounge to avoid further interruptions. However, Wang Ling, Sun Rong, and Shou Yu arrived in front of the teacher's lounge, only to find the door was locked. Realizing there were no security cameras, Wang Ling unintentionally broke the door and walls using his power. Hey, we're all waiting for class to start. <laughs> Despite their plea for instruction, Master Pan declined due to her exhaustion. Realizing this, Master Wang took the initiative to replace Master Pan, but Soon Rong and Shou Yu refused and firmly told Master Wang that they only wanted to be taught by Master Pan. Overwhelmed by handling all the lessons, Master Pan even hid in the toilet to avoid the students who kept urging her to teach, even though she was already very tired. However, Soon Rong managed to find her and persuaded her to return to class. Eventually, Master Pan gave in and told Soon Rong that she would allow Master Yi to teach them physical art, 
much to Sun Rong's delight as her plan was successful. The following day, Wang Ling and his classmates gathered on the school field because Master Yi would test their spiritual strength by asking them to throw a 10-kilogram ball. Master Yi then explained that a cultivator who had reached the foundation phase could throw the ball more than 80 meters. Chan Chao, who was the first to take the test, appeared very excited and managed to throw the ball 100 meters, but for some reason, Master Yi seemed slightly disappointed, even though Chan Cho was one of the most talented students in the school. When Wang Ling got his turn for the test, Soon Rong and Shou Yu felt uneasy, hoping he could carry out the test without causing any incidents that could destroy their school. Knowing that the ball was very light, Wang Ling used a technique to increase the weight of the ball millions of times heavier than its original weight, and then the ball would return to its original weight after he threw it for one second. Upon learning this, Zheng Kei felt a little nervous because he knew Wang Ling's extraordinary strength, but he could do nothing but trust him. Wang Ling then threw the ball, but Master Yi seemed disappointed as it only traveled 50 meters, leading him to remove Wang Ling's name off the list as a potential successor. However, unbeknownst to them, Wang Ling's throw had circled the earth and caused damage in several places in other parts of the world, even accidentally striking King Zhou, who was on his way to Faction 60, causing him to fall from his flying sword. Despite Wang Ling's failure in the test, he seemed unconcerned, while Sun Rong was astonished to learn from Shou Yu that Wang Ling's thrown ball had circled the earth and eventually landed on the field. Later that evening, Master Wang met with Master Yi to discuss the test results. Master Yi admitted he hadn't found a suitable successor yet, and he didn't expect Wang Ling to fail the test at all. Master Yi then informed Master Wang about King Zhou, who had come to attack Faction 60, unaware that King Zhou had been knocked down by Wang Ling. Learning that Master Yi hadn't found a successor, Master Wang inquired if he would still teach at their school, to which Master Yi confirmed that he would continue gradually. The following day, the other members of the Four Emblems faction were seen giving their final respects to King Zhou, who had been defeated by Wang Ling. One of them, Su Hu, swore to avenge the one who had defeated King Zhou and intended to attack Faction 60. On the other hand, Wang Ling was engrossed in a project in his room until he forgot that he had to attend morning classes at school that day. At the same time, Wang Ling heard the morning news about King Zhou, a fugitive, who had been successfully captured by the city's hero, Zhou Yi, though it was Wang Ling's ball that had actually brought King Zhou down. Meanwhile, Er He was intrigued by Wang Ling's activity and Jing Kei explained that Wang Ling was constructing a demon world with Er Ha as its theme. Jing Kei explained that the underground spiritual vein was a key element to create anything, similar to laying the initial foundation before building a house. He added that Wang Ling created the underground spiritual vein, using his two favorite packs of fried noodles, to replace the materials from the way of heaven. Although I didn't doubt Wang Ling's extraordinary power at all, he seemed worried because Wang Ling created it out of thin air. At school, Master Wang was teaching his students about the underground spiritual vein. He explained that since humans entered the era of universal scientific cultivation, the Earth's core had been affected by spiritual energy and began to grow the underground spiritual vein like the meridian blood vessels in the human body. This vein connects to the Earth's crust, varying in thickness. Areas above thicker veins contain strong spiritual energy, while those above thinner ones have weaker energy. Master Wang also explained that a collapse of the spiritual vein could trigger diverse natural events. He added that feeling sleepy in class might indicate a lack of spiritual energy. When Chan Chou asked about creating an artificial underground spiritual vein, Master Wang explained that humans would not be able to create an underground spiritual vein that could penetrate to the Earth's core. Meanwhile, Wang Ling, who had successfully created the spiritual roots, appeared to be staring out the window while contemplating something. At the same time, his classmates were astonished by the unexpected snowfall, despite it being June. Apparently, the snowfall at the school was also known by Master Yi, but he chose to let the strange phenomenon happen because he wanted to find his successor as soon as possible. Concerned for the student's safety, Master Wang confronted Master Yi, suspecting it was related to the sinister swordmaster, Chan Nun Swan, but Master Yi refused to explain anything to Master Wang. On the other hand, when Wang Ling arrived at the school field, where Jing Kei informed him that the underground spiritual vein at Faction 60 had been destroyed, causing snow to suddenly fall at the school. On the school field, Jing Kei informed Wang Ling that the snowfall resulted from the destruction of Faction 60's underground spiritual vein. 
The Wang Ling attempted to rectify it. Chan Chao and Gu Hao instead pelted him with snowballs. Wang Ling could easily avoid the snowballs, but Jing Kei warned him of someone observing them. Upon hearing that, Wang Ling intentionally allowed himself to be hit by the snowball. So soon Rong and Xiu Yu joined them to play together. As Wang Ling was playing with his friends, Jing Kei reminded them of the increasingly cold air and the worsening snowstorm. However, Wang Ling reassured Jing Kei by saying that they still had time. Sensing the dropping temperature, Chan Chao and the others decided to return inside the school building. In the teacher's lounge, Master Pan appeared worried about the current situation they were facing, but Master Wang assured her that Master Yi would handle it. When she asked about Master Yi's successor, Master Wang revealed that Master Yi hadn't chosen one yet. Master Pan then suggested Sun Rong as a suitable candidate due to her talent. She also added that they had plenty of talented students in school, but Wang Ling was not one of them, so Master Yi would not choose Wang Ling as his successor. Meanwhile, as Chan Chao reached for the classroom door, he was shocked by the freezing air, causing his hand to freeze. Inside, his classmates mentioned someone's tongue had frozen, and the school was also experiencing a power outage. Wanting to break the door, Chan Chao was cautioned by Gu Hao that he would get into trouble if he damaged the school property. On the other hand, Sun Rong suggested using the fireball technique, because Chan Chao was one of the talented students who could use the technique well. But for some reason, he could only produce a small spark, leading Gu Hao to tease him. Gu Hao tried next, but had the same result. Upon seeing that, Sun Rong and Shou Yu also tried to use the technique, but they experienced the same thing as their two friends, even though they were the most talented students in the school. Sun Rong quickly realized that the spiritual energy around them was beginning to diminish, and the snowstorm at their school was happening, because the underground spiritual vein at Faction 60 was having issues. As they thought of ways to fix the underground spiritual vein at their school, Shou Yu suddenly collapsed because her body's resistance to the cold air was weaker than theirs, prompting Chan Chao to immediately wrap Shou Yu in his jacket and hurriedly took her to the infirmary. On the other hand, Su Hu appeared to have arrived at Faction 60, where he turned out to be the one who intentionally destroyed the underground spiritual vein at the school to avenge King Zhou's death. Amidst the panic of the freezing weather, Wang Ling calmly approached Su Hu in the snowstorm. Su Hu, seeing that Wang Ling didn't seem to be affected by the cold at all, wondered about it, but Wang Ling refused to explain anything to Su Hu. Wang Ling then attacked Su Hu and managed to defeat him with just one light strike. Shortly after, Wang Ling planted Jing Kei into the core of the underground spiritual vein to repair it. With his unlimited spiritual power, Wang Ling could easily fix the underground spiritual vein, returning the school to its previous state. Meanwhile, Master Yi pondered over who could have defeated Su Hu and repaired the vein, as he found no one on the school grounds. In another location, as Zhou Yi was preparing for a press conference, a sword suddenly appeared, followed by Su Hu falling from the ceiling. Journalists, aware of Su Hu's fugitive status like King Zhou, questioned Zhou Yi about his involvement in Su Hu's capture. Although Su Hu's appearance was unexpected, Zhou Yi quickly responded to the journalist's curiosity to avoid arousing suspicion. Later in his office, Zhou Yi's secretary informed him of Su Hu's demise from a single strike and falling from a height. The secretary also informed Zhou Yi that he was now the most wanted fugitive by the Four Emblems faction because they believed Zhou Yi was the one who killed their members. Upon learning this, Zhou Yi attempted to maintain composure, but once his secretary departed, he was consumed by panic and fear. He urgently reached out to Wang Ling, whom he referred to as the master, seeking assistance. Wang Ling, aware of Zhou Yi's vulnerability, had been crafting specialized clothing to protect him. However, acquiring the necessary materials posed a challenge. While Jing Kei suggested exchanging Wang Ling's beloved fried noodles for materials from the Way of Heaven. However, Wang Ling chose to buy the materials directly and went with his friends to the supermarket. Shortly after, Wang Ling and his friends arrived at the supermarket, where they seemed to wander around to look at some items sold there. Their attention was soon diverted by a large shrimp displayed in an aquarium, sparking their amazement. Gu Hao mentioned that the giant shrimp had protein 300 times more than beef, but he didn't really like the taste of the giant shrimp because it was not delicious. Upon hearing that, Chan Chao suddenly felt jealous because his friend had tasted the giant shrimp, which turned out to be very expensive. Following their supermarket visit, Wang Ling and his friends visited an antique shop selling various ancient magical weapons at prices, reaching millions of spiritual stones. Despite their immense power, 
These weapons weren't necessarily usable, even if they had the money to buy them. Apparently, these magical weapons had minds of their own, so they could choose anyone they desired to be their owners. Chan Chao noted that individuals with formidable spiritual strength could easily control these weapons and even hear their voices. On the other hand, one Ling felt overwhelmed as he entered the shop. He could hear voices from all the magical weapons, begging him to buy them. However, he declined, preferred to buy fried noodles over magical weapons. This decision left the weapons sad, one of them even losing its sparkle. Meanwhile, a man monitored Wang Ling and his friends from CCTV, instructing his servant to allow them buy whatever they wanted. The man apparently knew that Wang Ling and his friends were from Faction 60. Surprisingly, the man turned out to be affiliated with the Four Emblems faction and intended to retaliate against Faction 60 by allowing Wang Ling and his friends to buy anything in the supermarket just with their spiritual power. Despite the rule violation, the man appeared unconcerned, prioritizing teaching Zhou Yi a lesson by causing trouble for his students. He seemed hesitant to confront Zhou Yi directly due to rumors suggesting Zhou Yi's backing by the most influential cultivator in the human world. Meanwhile, Wang Ling and his friends visited a store where Wang Ling finally obtained the materials he needed and paid 800 spiritual stones. At the same time, Chan Cho took interest in the Void Glasses, the latest product available. A salesman named Jun immediately explained its benefits, claiming it could enhance cultivators' abilities even if they never underwent combat training. Chan Chao then tried using the Void Glasses and instantly became very excited because the item was so advanced. But Chan Chao immediately became sad upon learning that the Void Glasses were sold at a fairly high price. Realizing this, Jun then informed Chan Chao that he could buy the Void Glasses with his spiritual power and Chan Chao only needed to scan his fingerprint on a special EDC machine to sign the contract. Aware of the potential risks of using spiritual power as payment, Gu Hao promptly cautioned Chan Chao against being swayed by Jun's offer. However, Jun, having researched Gu Hao, enticed him with a blind box containing a coveted spiritual beast egg. Gu Hao, intrigued by the chance to raise a spiritual beast and the free parenting guidance, considered purchasing it. Meanwhile, Soon Rong and Shou Yu grew suspicious of Jun's knowledge about Chan Chao and Gu Hao's preferences. Although Wang Ling suggested Jun might have obtained such information from Big Data, Soon Rong insisted on using her credit card to settle their bill, refusing to let her friends use their spiritual power as payment. However, Jun, who had received instructions from his boss, refused payment with Soon Rong's credit card without providing any explanation. On the other hand, Wang Ling, aware of Jun's intentions from Jin Kei's information, presented Jun with a raffle brochure. Upon seeing that, Jun then instructed his staff to bring a raffle machine, as stated in the pamphlet, anyone who had spent 100 spiritual stones at the supermarket was entitled to one chance to spin the machine and receive prizes according to the applicable terms. Since Wang Ling spent 800 spiritual stones, he had 8 spins. Wang Ling then expressed his desire for the void glasses and Jun informed him that obtaining a golden ball would grant him the glasses for free. However, Jun was confident Wang Ling wouldn't succeed due to the odds being against him, with 30,000 silver balls and various other items in the machine. Unbeknownst to Jun, Wang Ling actually used the time-limited art of great luck, granting him unlimited luck for an hour. Wang Ling immediately obtained a golden ball on his first spin, stunning Jun. After that, Chan Chao and the others celebrated Wang Ling's success with Chan Chao embracing him like a brother. Attempting to deceive them, Jun claimed Wang Ling needed two golden balls to obtain the void glasses for free. Despite Jun's efforts, Wang Ling once again succeeded in obtaining a golden ball. Additionally, he also acquired red rubies, earning him a free spiritual beast egg, which he gifted to Gu Hao. Continuing his streak, Wang Ling employed his exceptional luck at a shop specializing in rare plants, securing the desired prize for Shouyu. They proceeded to other stores, where Wang Ling's fortune continued, winning numerous raffles and obtaining various items for free. Observing this through CCTV, Jun's boss grew furious and tasked his servant with uncovering Wang Ling's preferences. Eventually, at a snack shop, Wang Ling attempted to purchase a pack of fried noodles but, once again, luck was on his side, acquiring all the noodles in the store for free. Frustrated by Wang Ling's luck, Jun decided to resign from his position. Meanwhile, on the train journey home, Gu Hao and Chan Chao appear to be contemplating the mistakes they might regret for the rest of their lives if they were tempted by Jun's offer to use their spiritual power as payment. 
Chan Chiu then proposed a plan to sell the items they had acquired through Wang Ling's luck at a charity sale event in their school, which received immediate approval from Gu Hao and the others, including Wang Lin, who was preoccupied with his fried noodles. Later that evening, Zhou Yi was delighted to receive a gift from Wang Lin, and upon opening it, he found a suit made by Wang Lin specifically to protect him. Meanwhile, at the Way of Heaven Library, where there were 3,000 secret techniques of the Way of Heaven, these secret techniques from the Way of Heaven were the most sought after by cultivators worldwide, because anyone who could master one of the 3,000 secret techniques of the Way of Heaven would become unbeatable. However, most cultivators might never find a trace of the Way of Heaven's secret arts in their lifetime, as it all depended on their own spiritual strength. Behind the scenes, every day, the Way of Heaven elves diligently safeguarded these secrets, and they were also responsible for handling the rest of the trivial affairs within the world. One of the Way of Heaven elves then reported to the Blue Spiritual Master that they had two newly deceased cultivators. These two cultivators turned out to be King Zhou and Suhu, and when the Blue Master saw the wounds on their bodies, he immediately knew that Wang Ling was the one who had killed them, even though Wang Ling did it unintentionally. Recognizing the wickedness of King Zhou and Suhu, the Blue Master ordered the spiritual elves to confine them in the lunar well so that they could contemplate their sins. He then consulted the Red Spiritual Master, responsible for monitoring cultivators worldwide, who reported a significant rise in seekers of the Way of Heaven's secret arts. Therefore, the Red Master stressed the importance of protecting these secrets from those with ill intentions. The scene then shifted to Chan Nun Swan ascending what seemed to be an endless staircase. Nun Swan, who was the second heir of the Infinite Sword faction, was attempting to complete his 6,751st challenge to the Ladder of Mind to master the secret arts of the Way of Heaven. Although Nun Swan possessed great spiritual power, he never respected his master, so he failed yet again, as cultivators who did not respect their teachers were unworthy to learn the secret arts of the Way of Heaven. Although he had failed yet again, Nun Swan remained confident in inheriting the faction leadership, because his senior would soon pass away due to old age. He also had very talented disciples who would eventually become his successors. But Nun Swan seemed unaware that his two disciples, King Zhou and Suhu, had already died. At the Four Emblems faction headquarters, where two remaining disciples of Chan Nun Swan, Song Wu and Zhu Zhen, are discussing their revenge plan against Zhou Yi, whom they consider to have underestimated their faction. Zhu Zhen then suggested reporting the deaths to their master, but Song Wu believed their master was aware in testing them. Song Wu adds that their master has a mysterious disciple named Zero, who is said to be much stronger than them. Therefore, Song Wu emphasizes that they should resolve the issue before Zero does to avoid embarrassment in front of their master. Upon hearing this, Zhu Zhen informs his senior about Faction 60's upcoming charity sale event, intending to use his fierce flame divine sword to destroy them, as anything touched by the sword will explode. Feeling confident in his ability to destroy Faction 60, Zhu Zhen is observed by the Red Master from the Way of Heaven Library, who remarks that they should prepare for yet another deceased cultivator. The Blue Master, upon hearing this, sighs and wonders why they dare to pick a fight with the only person on the white list of the Way of Heaven, which will only bring disaster upon themselves. The next day, Master Pan announces to her students the charity sale event scheduled for the following day, instructing them to sell their unused items. The proceeds will be donated to the poor factions in the city, and students who participate in the charity sale event will receive additional points. Additionally, Master Pan states that their school has also prepared special prizes for the students who managed to sell the most of their unused items. Jane Kay then asked Wang Ling if he plans to sell anything at the charity sale, to which Wang Ling replies that he hasn't decided yet. Upon returning home, Wang Ling heads to the warehouse with Er Ha, who is curious about a sealed cabinet. During his stay at Wang Ling's home, Er had no idea about the cabinet, and thought that Wang Ling might be hiding his treasure inside it. As Wang Ling unsealed and opened the cabinet, he invited Erha to join him. After they walked further, surprisingly, they arrived at the Way of Heaven Library. Jin Kei explained to Erha about the place and upon learning that he was shocked, because he had never expected Wang Ling to easily access the Way of Heaven. Erha, acknowledging Wang Ling as the most powerful cultivator, is surprised to see the seven spiritual masters kneeling in respect to Wang Ling calling in her master. Upon discovering the truth, Erha felt deeply appreciative, because Wang Lin was willing to adopt him as his pet dog. 
Wang Ling planned to trade a pack of his beloved fried noodles for a magical item to sell at the charity sale the next day. Erhe was puzzled by what Wang Ling could acquire with such an item. But Jing Kei explained that the noodles were Wang Ling's most cherished possession, even though Erhe considered them mere snacks. When Wang Ling tossed the pack of noodles in the well, the Red Master retrieved a golden silkworm, explaining that clothing made from it could greatly enhance strength. However, Wang Ling declined the offer, prompting the Red Master to present a magical soap that reduces weight. Wang Ling refused this too, and the soap was returned to the well. At the same time, Chan Nunswan, who continued to strive to make his way to the way of heaven for the umpteenth time, once again failed because he slipped on the soap. The Red Master then offered a golden pill to permanently boost spiritual strength, but Wang Ling declined, expressing a preference for something ordinary and straightforward. On the other hand, Er had proposed that Wang Ling give the golden pill to his parents, but Wang Ling declined, citing his parents' teachings against misusing power. He also expressed a desire for a simple life. Upon hearing this, the Red Master brought out various items they possessed, but Wang Ling continued to decline, indicating that he hadn't found what he wanted yet. While Wang Ling was occupied with his requests, Chan Nunswan, still striving on the ladder of mind, finally had the chance to learn the way of heaven's secret arts. At the same time, Erga was surprised that a pack of fried noodles could be exchanged for so many magical items that could make all cultivators in the world willing to do anything to obtain those items. Jin Kei then explained that despite their value, fried noodles held great significance for Wang Ling. Erga then wondered why Wang Ling liked fried noodles so much. It turned out that it all started with diddles made by Wang Ling when he was three years old, during which time Wang Ling accidentally called the Red Master. When he arrived in Wang Ling's room, the Red Master was interested in the painting drawn by Wang Ling. He intended to take the painting hanging on the wall, but at the same time, he realized the extraordinary spiritual power possessed by Wang Ling. The Red Master then made a deal with Wang Ling to exchange the painting for a pack of fried noodles. In addition, the Red Master also promised to include Wang Ling on the Way of Heaven's white list because he thought Wang Ling would never be able to reach the Way of Heaven to find him. Three-year-old Wang Ling agreed to the deal, and for the first time, he tasted fried noodles. Surprisingly, Wang Ling ate the fried noodles eagerly, and to this day, Wang Ling has made fried noodles his favorite food. Back in the present, the Blue Master appeared upset upon learning the truth, and the Red Master apologized. Shortly after, a sealed rice cooker emerged from the well, and Wang Ling promptly chose it. Meanwhile, Chan Nunswan, now possessing the secret art of the way of heaven, harbored sinister intentions toward his seniors, aiming to become the sole heir of the Infinite Sword faction. The scene shifted to Zhu Zhen, preparing to carry out his mission to destroy Faction 60. As Zhu Zhen departed, Zodi's colleague Wang infiltrated the Four Emblems faction headquarters to investigate. At that moment, Wang informed Zhou Yi that Su Zhen might be on his way to Faction 60 to seek revenge for King Zhao and Su Hu's deaths. Wang seemed to discover something at the headquarters round table, but an incident occurred, leading him to inform Zhou Yi via their communication device that he had sent the headquarters location. The following day, Chan Chao and the others were discussing the special prizes they would receive from their school principal. Chan Chao then inquired about Gu Ho's items for the charity sale. But Gu Ho mentioned they hadn't arrived yet and would only be delivered when the sale commenced. Meanwhile, Chan Chao presented his father's broadsword, which he had permission to sell, while Shou Yu, lacking magical weapons, decided to craft mini clay figurines for the sale. She gifted some to her friends, who admired her carving skills as the figurines resembled them closely. Soon Rong then questioned Wang Ling about his charity sale item, and he revealed a rice cooker from the Way of Heaven Library. Later, the students gathered on the school field and displayed their unused items at several stands provided. Meanwhile, Gu Hao received a package containing the items for sale, and when Gu Hao opened the jar, three very cute and adorable kittens appeared. He explained that the three kittens were just born last night, and he had to register them first to get a certificate before he was allowed to sell them. Therefore, the three kittens were only sent after Gu Hao obtained their birth and ownership certificates. Soon Rong, upon seeing the three kittens, immediately recognized them as the rare snow jade spiritual cats. She then picked up one of the kittens, but one of them rebelled when Chan Chao held it, scratching Chan Chao's face before finally running away. As Wang Ling and his friends conducted the charity sale on the school field, Zhu Zhen sneaked into the school disguised as a student. Nearly caught by Master Pan for breaking rules, Zhu Zhen apologized sincerely, 
earning him permission to enter without being reprimanded. After that, Zhu Zhen made his way to the school rooftop, where he took out his fierce flame divine sword, intending to attack the students below. However, Wang Lin, seemingly aware of the impending attack, easily thwarted it with a snap of his fingers. Chan Chao, eager to attract buyers, urged Wang Lin to engage more actively in selling his rice cooker. Gu Hao then reminded Chan Chao of Wang Lin's quiet nature, suggesting they respect him. When Sun Rong offered to assist Wang Lin in selling his item, Gu Hao inquired about the item she was selling. Sun Rong claimed to be selling something ordinary, concealing the fact that the item Sun Rong was selling was her family company's commercial rocket launch button, which was not actually an ordinary item. Meanwhile, Zhu Zhen was appeared very shocked to learn that his attack had been detected, believing Faction Sixie's cultivators to be of a lower level than himself. Although his first attack failed, Zhu Zhen had a plan B by putting his sword into a rice cooker then discreetly placing the rice cooker among the item being sold at the charity sale. Zhu Zhen thought that none of them would notice it, but Wang Lin, who was much stronger than him, immediately noticed the presence of the rice cooker and quickly secured it before anyone touched it and caused a large explosion at the school. It appeared that Wang Lin had coordinated with Zhou Yi to handle the situation discreetly at the school gym. When Zhou Yi inquired how he handled the situation, Wang Ling said nothing and instead took out his rice cooker, then unsealed it. Wang Ling then put Zhu Zhen's rice cooker into his own rice cooker and sealed it back. Before departing, Wang Ling informed Zhou Yi of Zhu Zhen's location on the school rooftop, prompting Zhou Yi to rush there to confront him. On the rooftop, Zhu Zhen was stunned to discover his rice cooker had vanished. Soon after, Zhou Yi arrived to apprehend him, but Zhu Zhen resisted, mocking Zhou Yi's status as only a cultivator at the golden pill stage. However, Zhou Yi, with confidence, stated that he was the righteous hero in the city, and it was his duty to capture criminals like Zhu Zhen and his comrades. Despite Zhu Zhen's attacks, Zhou Yi remained unaffected, thanks to the special clothing crafted by Wang Lin. Perplexed by Zhou Yi's possession of divine magic wear, typically reserved for immortal stage cultivators, Zhu Zhen continued his assault until a powerful explosion occurred between them. Meanwhile, students witnessing the explosion pondered its cause while Sun Rong expressed her intention to purchase Wang Ling's rice cooker. Shortly after, the charity sale concluded, and students returned to their classes. The headmaster then visited the elite class, announcing their successful raised one million spiritual coins for helping poor factions in remote areas. The headmaster also announced, Wang Ling the recipient of a special prize because Sun Rong bought his rice cooker at a very high price. The headmaster then asked Wang Ling the prize he wanted, offering scholarships, certificates, or magical weapons. However, Wang Ling was not interested in such things at all, and he said he only wanted a packet of fried noodles. A few days later, Song Wu, the leader of the Four Emblems faction, was seen visiting the night market while carrying King Jiao's spiritual core that he found in the sea near the city. He vowed to create a new body for King Jiao after avenging Faction 60. King Jiao then directed Song Wu to seek help from their master's old friend in case of a crisis. Upon reaching the designated place, a masked individual promptly handed Song Wu a bag upon recognizing him. Upon examining the bag's contents, Song Wu discovered something to retaliate against Faction 60. Unbeknownst to them, Wang Ling secretly observed their plan. After Song Wu left the place, Wang Ling knocked on the window just as Song Wu had done. Unexpectedly, the masked man appeared trembling when he saw Wang Ling, so he immediately gave Wang Ling what he wanted, which a packet of fried noodles. The next day, Zhou Yi met with his superior, reporting the capture of Four Emblems faction members. He also delivered a letter from Wang Lin, which mentioned that Song Wu had successfully obtained the key to Nuwa's secret realm. Zhou Yi explained that Chan Nun Swan, a formidable cultivator, had access to Nuwa's secret realm, containing semi-finished pottery figurines by ancient puppet masters. If Song Wu managed to activate those pottery figurines, it could be ensured that they would become highly deadly weapons in warfare. Following this, Zhou Yi was instructed to prepare for an imminent attack from Song Wu. Meanwhile at school, Master Wang informed about the Four Emblems faction's challenge order against Faction 60. Master Wang, who also received information about the pottery figurines, added that their school would be the main battlefield which might be attacked from all directions. Knowing that the pottery figurines would be at the spiritual infant level after an activation, Master Pan immediately panicked and suggested that they send the students home and close the school for a few days. However, Master Yi declared his commitment to protecting the students, 
stating that if he failed, he wouldn't be worthy of being called a swordmaster. Master Yi then mustered all his spiritual power, which allowed him to become numb again, prompting the headmaster to pleaded with Master Yi to protect their students and ordered Master Wang and Master Pan to prepare everything before the battle. The headmaster also believed that the students had enjoyed peace for long enough, and they were mature enough to face real battles, especially since they had been taught various techniques for attacking and defending. Shortly after, Master Pan informed Wang Ling and his classmates about the challenge order from the Four Emblems faction. A challenge order was a declaration of war between factions and usually, the lower-level factions would challenge the higher-level factions to gain promotion. But this time, Faction 60, which was a lower-level faction, received a war challenge from the Four Emblems faction, which was at the highest level. On the other hand, Wang Ling sighed, realizing his peaceful life was once again disrupted. Master Pan recounted the faction's past challenges, including attacks from the Shadow Faction and demon invasions damaging the school. Despite these trials, they emerged victorious, emphasizing the triumph of virtue over evil. She then urged the students to prepare themselves mentally and maintain their resolve to combat evil. Inspired by her speech, the students felt motivated, but soon after that, Master Pan assigned a task to her students to write her passionate speech of 3,000 words, which instantly made them feel down. Meanwhile, Song Wu appeared to have entered Nuwa's secret realm and summoned the pottery figurines, which turned out to be very numerous. Song Wu then dressed and prepared the pottery figurines for battle against Faction 60. As Song Wu and his army marched towards Faction 60, Zhou Yi activated the emergency combined defense mechanism and to notify the other righteous factions who would assist them. Soon after that, Master Zhang received information from his butler about Song Wu passing through their territory on the way to Faction 60. Upon learning this, Master Zhang ordered his butler to prepare their troops to repel the attack from Song Wu because Master Zhang wanted to be on good terms with Zhou Yi's master, who was said to be the most powerful cultivator in the human world. Besides Master Zhang, other factions, led by Master Elizabeth, also decided to assist Faction 60, because the headmaster was their close friend. On the other hand, the head of the Kumia family also decided to help Faction 60, because of the influence of Master Zhang, who was highly respected by other factions. Not only that, Lord Thunder also gathered faction leaders in the city to aid Faction 60 against the Four Emblems faction, which was an evil and immoral faction. Knowing that their enemy was the highest level faction, they planned to combine their forces, while considering the right strategy to defeat Song Wu and his army. That night, Master Wang gathered the students and instructed them to use collective defensive skills to build a barrier that would protect them. Meanwhile, Wang Lin, sensing Song Wu's approach with the pottery figurines, quietly sneaked away to monitor the situation. When Song Wu's army finally arrived and began their attack, some students, including Sun Rong, seemed overwhelmed by the attack, but surprisingly, Erha and his demon companions came to their aid. As Song Wu prepared his signature move to destroy Faction 60, Master Yi confronted him at the gate, prompting Song Wu to belittle him as old and weak, asserting that no one in Faction 60, including Master Yi, would be able to defeat him. However, Wang Ling intervened, using the Great Disarmament Art to neutralize the pottery figurines and defeat Song Wu. Master Yi, realizing the emergence of the Way of Heaven's secret art from the school building, was greatly surprised and wondered who had used the secret art to defeat Song Wu. But soon after that, Master Wang appeared and believed that Master Yi had defeated Song Wu. After their victory over Song Wu, Zhou Yi ordered his subordinates to secure the headquarters of the Four Emblems faction. Despite capturing most members, Zhou Yi remained uneasy as Chan Nun Swan, the faction's leader, had not been captured. Suddenly, their communication was disrupted. Meanwhile, Zero, Chan Nun Swan's secret disciple, infiltrated the headquarters intending to avenge the deaths of his comrades. The next day, Soon Rong was seen visiting a bank accompanied by her bodyguards. Welcomed by the manager, she was led to a vault, which had a highly sophisticated security system. As one of the wealthiest and most influential families in the country, Sun Rong's family had a special storage space in the bank, located on the highest floor. The storage space resembled a pill-refining furnace sealed with special seals to ensure the security of the items and treasures stored inside. Sun Rong then presented a pack of fried noodles gifted by Wang Ling to be stored inside. Apparently, the fried noodles held significant value for Sun Rong as they were a gift from Wang Ling, who cherished them dearly. 
At the same time, Sun Yi Yuan appeared and insisted on securing Sun Rong in the storage space for three days to ensure her safety, following a threat from Zero. Reluctantly, Sun Yi Yuan confined Sun Rong in the furnace, worried about her safety after receiving the threatening letter. Wang Ling, upon learning about the assassination plan against Sun Rong, instantly became angry to the point of breaking his chopsticks. Zero, also known as Huang Long, was a secretive member of the Four Emblems faction, training in an underground cave beneath their headquarters. Because beneath the headquarters of the Four Emblems faction lay a thick underground spiritual vein, it could be ensured that Huang Long became stronger while practicing in that underground cave. Some high-level cultivators commented that Sun Rong might be in danger because Huang Long was much stronger than them. However, one cultivator felt confident that Sun Rong inherited special powers from her family because, besides their wealth, the Sun family was also known for their extremely powerful spiritual strength. That night, Wang Ling and others visited Sun Rong's house, moving Sun Yi Yuan deeply with their concern for her. Chan Chiu then commented that confining Sun Rong in the vault might not be a lasting solution. But Gu Hao replied that it was a good effort by Sun Rong's grandfather, because Wang Long was known as a skilled thief who always managed to steal whatever he promised within the given time. Additionally, Wang Long was also known for his disguise skills, so Sun Yi Yuan didn't want to take the risk of allowing Sun Rong to interact directly with others. Sun Yi Yuan meticulously arranged for Sun Rong's comfort, creating a space resembling her bedroom, providing Wi-Fi for communication and nutrition pills to sustain her. The bank also activated advanced security measures, with assistance from Zhou Yi and his subordinates, ensuring Sun Rong's safety within the bank vault. Meanwhile, while Wang Ling's friends and Sun Yi Yuan were engaged in conversation in the living room, Wang Ling excused himself under the pretext of taking his dawn for a walk. However, his true intention was to devise a plan to rescue Sun Rong. Arriving at Sun Rong's room with her ha, they promptly broke down the door and entered. Wang Ling easily repaired the door using his strength. Unaware of the late hour, Chan Cheo and the others continued enjoying themselves in the living room as midnight approached. At the same time, the electricity suddenly went out in the bank, cutting off their phone connection with Sun Rong. On the other hand, Wang Long, having successfully abducted Sun Rong, disclosed his motives for targeting her and his guise as the hired cultivator. He boasted of mastering the abilities of the Four Emblems faction's captured members, asserting his superiority. Wang Long then expressed confidence in Sun Rong's inability to escape his spiritual creation or anyone rescuing her. Upon hearing that, Sun Rong suddenly panicked, but surprisingly Wang Ling appeared, offering assistance against Wang Long. Wang Ling then explained that he couldn't come directly to that spiritual place because Wang Long's spiritual power was too weak, and if Wang Ling entered, the place would surely be destroyed, which might endanger Sun Rong's life. Wang Ling then instructed Sun Rong to eat the fried noodles he gave her as a gift, and as Sun Rong ate them, she unexpectedly transformed into the immortal king mode. After eating the fried noodles, Sun Rong could feel her spiritual power increasing drastically, as she would share some of her spiritual power with Wang Ling in his sealed state. Sun Rong then asked about how much spiritual power she would gain, and Wang Ling replied that she would only get one-tenth of his one million spiritual power. Upon learning that, Sun Rong was shocked because she didn't realize that Wang Ling actually had such incredible spiritual power. Wang Ling then told Sun Rong to prepare to fight Wang Long, and she could easily fend off Wang Long's attacks in the Immortal King mode. As people concerns for Sun Rong's safety following her sudden disappearance, the electricity was unexpectedly restored, revealing Sun Rong on the screen and she told everyone that she was okay. However, it was actually Er had disguised as Sun Rong under Wang Ling's orders. Knowing Er has limited spiritual power, Wang Ling transferred his own power to Er via a USB cable to maintain his disguise until Sun Rong defeated Wang Long. Meanwhile, Zhen Kei visited Zhou Yi and informed him that Sun Rong was battling Wang Long, urging Zhou Yi to prepare for Wang Long's capture, as the fight would conclude in three minutes. Meanwhile, in the midst of the battle, Wang Long wondered how a cultivator in the foundation phase like Sun Rong had spiritual power like high-level cultivators. Wang Long concluded that the fried noodles Sun Rong ate before the fight must contain some kind of drug to drastically increase her strength, and he thought that sooner or later Sun Rong would die from the side effects of eating those fried noodles. Despite Wang Long's confidence in his signature move, Sun Rong, determined to defeat him, launched a fierce assault. Although her first attack missed, in subsequent attacks, 
Soon Rong managed to damage Huang Long's spiritual creation, even knocking him down. On the other hand, Master Yi, still curious about a mysterious cultivator who could use the Way of Heaven's secret arts, had apparently learned that Huang Long was fighting against that mysterious cultivator. The headmaster approached Master Yi and said that the person Master Yi was looking for might not be from Faction 60, because their faction was a low-level faction, nothing special. However, Master Yi remained steadfast in his belief that the person he was looking for was from Faction 60, although he had found no clues about them. Master Yi then connected the small wordless book to his smartphone to broadcast Wang Long's fight live so that people could also witness the battle. However, the wordless book would only display Huang Long, because Huang Long had fought Master Yi before. Nevertheless, Master Yi and everyone watching the fight could tell that Huang Long was fighting against a mysterious high-level cultivator. As the battle unfolded, Chan Chao pondered the enigmatic cultivator's identity, suspecting Wang Lin due to his habitual disappearances during crucial moments. However, Xiu Yi denied it, claiming Wang Lin's spiritual power was weak despite knowing that Wang Lin did have incredibly strong spiritual power. On the other hand, Lord Thunder, witnessing the confrontation alongside Master Wang appeared shocked, because the mysterious cultivator not only moved freely in Huang Long's spiritual space, but also managed to injure Huang Long several times. Master Wang believed that the mysterious cultivator fighting Huang Long must be at a much higher level than Huang Long, who was a true immortal phase cultivator. Prompting Lord Thunder to consider Wang Lin, Recalling his ability to destroy spiritual vessels, and he had known that Wang Ling was the one secretly supporting Zhou Yi behind the scenes. However, Lord Thunder hesitated to disclose this to Master Wang, uncertain of Wang Ling's true strength. Amidst the intense duel, Wang Long deliberately provoking Sun Rong to kill him, seeking to corrupt her cultivation heart. Wang Ling urged Sun Rong to ignore Wang Long's provocation and press on with her attacks. Desperate as Sun Rong managed to deflect his attacks, Wang Long decided to exert all his strength and transform into a berserk mode to kill Sun Rong, even if he had to lose his own life. Despite Wang Long's desperate onslaught, Sun Rong, with Wang Ling's guidance, countered his moves and ultimately overpowered him, expelling him from his spiritual space. Knowing that Wang Long had been defeated, Master Yi hurried to the location to find out who had defeated Wang Long. On the other hand, Zhou Yi, who had received information from Jing Kei, quickly captured Wang Long, while Wang Ling and Sun Rong appeared to be at the top of the tower. Shortly after, Sun Rong's condition normalized and Jing Kei explained that she could only harness one-tenth of Wang Ling's spiritual power for a brief duration. Wang Ling then gifted Sun Rong a packet of fried noodles as a token of her success in preserving world peace. While eating the fried noodles, Sun Rong remarked on the challenge of maintaining global harmony, to which Wang Ling acknowledged the fragility of their world. She then proposed they were together, but Wang Ling remained silent. Just as Sun Rong was about to express her feelings to Wang Ling, Master Yi appeared, prompting Wang Ling to vanish from sight. Finding only Sun Rong Master Yi, sensing remnants of Wang Ling's potent aura lingered on Sun Rong, concluded she was the mysterious cultivator who defeated Wang Long. He then knelt before Sun Rong, acknowledging her strength and asked her to become the new leader of the Infinite Sword faction, because Sun Rong was much stronger than him. The following days, Chan Dunswan, now in possession of the Way of Heaven's secret art, returned to the Four Emblems faction headquarters to find it sealed. Nunswan then interrogated one of Zhou Yi's subordinates about what had happened to the Four Emblems faction. Initially, she refused to explain anything to Nunswan, but Nunswan manipulated her mind to make her tell him everything. Meanwhile, Chan Chao and others attended a physical education class, with Sun Rong absent due to family matters. During the class, they practiced lifting and hip throws. Gu Hao faced Ku Xuan, while Chan Chao sparred with Wang Lin. In Sun Rong's absence, Xiu Yu sparred with Er Ha, considering him a senior because he was also a member of Faction 60. Gu Hao easily managed to throw Ku Xuan, as did Xiu Yu who succeeded in throwing Er Ha. But unexpectedly, Er had turned out to use shadow techniques, as he suddenly appeared behind Xiu Yu and managed to bring her down. Meanwhile, Chan Chao speculated about Sun Rong's absence, suggesting she might be dealing with personal issues. However, the teacher reprimanded him, urging focus on their physical education lesson instead. Chan Chao then tried to bring down Wang Ling, but his body turned out to be very heavy, although he appeared weak. As Wang Ling not wanting to stand out at school, he pretended to be weak so that Chan Chao could bring him down. 
On the other hand, Erhan and Shoyu soon realized that Wang Ling was acting so that people wouldn't suspect him. Shortly afterward, Hu Hao informed his friends that they had received an invitation from Zhou Yi to visit the hit immersive theater to witness the Battle of the Ancient Cultivators. Because the performance to be shown this time was the ancient battle of the legendary swordmaster Fun Ru, Hu Hao appeared very excited because he wanted to learn more about Fun Ru. On the other hand, Master Yi visited the Sun Rong family, expressing his desire to appoint Sun Rong as the new leader of the Infinite Sword faction. Hearing this, Sun Yi Yuan laughed at the proposal, denying Sun Rong's capabilities. To protect Wang Ling's secret, Sun Rong refuted Master Yi's claims, insisting she had only reached the foundation phase. Sun Yi Yuan then cautioned against endangering Sun Rong by making her Nun Swan's rival for faction leadership. Realizing that he couldn't persuade Sun Yi Yuan, Master Yi decided to leave. Before leaving, Master Yi was approached by Sun Rong, who then gave him a ticket, saying that the hit immersive theater in the city would feature a very spectacular performance. After Master Yi accepted the invitation, Sun Rong apologized for not meeting his expectations as a successor, and hoped he would find someone suitable to lead the Infinite Sword faction. The next day, Wang Zhou informed Wang Ling and Er Ha about his hospital visit. Wang Ling then suggested his father to use the observation techniques to find out their health conditions, but his mother dismissed the idea. Later, Wang Ling wore goggles while working in his room, claiming it was for everyone's safety. Shortly after Wang Ling carried Er Ha while saying he had a gift for him. Wang Ling then attached an amulet to his wardrobe, and surprisingly the wardrobe turned into a portal to another world. Jing Kei then explained that they would go to the new demon world created by Wang Ling for Er Ha. Wang Ling added that no planet in the galaxy was suitable for demons to live on, so he deliberately created a planet for the demons to live on peacefully there, astonishing Erha. The scene then shifts and shows Chan Cheo and his friends, who have arrived at Zhou Yi's place to watch a theater performance upon Zhou Yi's invitation. Zhou Yi mentions that the show is an exclusive performance, so only they are the audience. Chan Cheo informs Zhou Yi that they still have to wait for Wang Ling, but Zhou Yi says that Wang Ling has already entered the theater earlier. Sun Rong then explains to Chan Cho and the others that Wang Ling is the person who won the tickets to the theater when he won the lottery some time ago. Upon learning this, Shou Yu immediately grabs Sun Rong's arm and asks her what Wang Ling will do this time. Sun Rong replies that Shou Yu doesn't need to worry and asks her to enjoy the theater performance with them. Zhou Yi then uses the talisman given by Wang Ling and Shou Yu soon realizes that Zhou Di is using the space substitution rune, which can turn any door into an arbitrary one. When Zhou Yi opens the door, Gu Hao and Chan Chou become excited, because only high-level cultivators can create the space substitution rune and create the immersive theater. Meanwhile, Erta finds himself in the new demon world crafted by Wang Ling, and he appears to be very impressed with the place and feeling deeply touched by Wang Ling's kindness towards him. Wang Ling then demonstrates his abilities to Er Ha, showcasing how he manipulates nature with a sophisticated scroll, like growing trees and controlling the weather. When Chan Chou and the others arrive, they also seem very impressed by the worlds there, especially the rare plants thriving on immense spiritual energy, indicating the creator's advanced cultivation level, possibly in the immortal phase. As Go Hao questions Zhou Yi about the creator, at the same time, Wang Ling and Er Ha arrive riding a dragon. Wang Ling then gets off and tells his friends to ride the dragon, while he uses his sword to summon a unicorn named Seal Thee. Wang Ling then offers Sun Rong a ride on the unicorn, and she gladly accepts, holding Wang Ling's hand. Chan Chao, initially excited, becomes sad witnessing their closeness. Meanwhile, Master Yi finally joins them, welcomed by Zhou Yi. Elsewhere, Nun Swan learns about his disciple's fate, suspecting Sun Rong of their demise and the Four Emblems faction's downfall. Using soul-searching art, he traces Sun Rong's aura to Wang Ling's house. However, upon opening the door, he enters Wang Ling's demon world and directly confronting Master Yi. Confident in his newfound strength with the Way of Heaven, Nun Suan unleashes his formidable spiritual power, intimidating Master Yi. On the other hand, Wang Ling directs Seal V to shield Sun Rong and others from Nun Suan's immense pressure, while Master Yi uses his power to protect himself and Zhou Yi. Seeing Nun Swan's overwhelming spiritual power, Master Yi immediately realizes that Nun Swan has successfully achieved the Way of Heaven, making him much stronger than himself. 
Master Yi finds himself struggling to contain Nun Swan's overwhelming spiritual power. They're in for his life as he feels unable to withstand it. Fortunately, Wang Ling intervenes, easily thwarting Nun Swan's attack and rescuing them. Nun Swan confidently asserts to Master Yi that he only utilized a fraction of his way of heaven power, convinced that Master Yi stands no chance against him. Meanwhile, Chan Chao and Gu Hao, believing they are watching a theater performance, remain excited even though they cannot clearly see the faces of the actors fighting. Erhat then suggests them focusing on the battle rather than the performers. In the midst of the fight, Master Yi unleashes his powerful spiritual power, even transforming into a younger form. As Master Yi prepares to use one of his signature sword techniques, Soon Rong predicts that his spiritual power has drastically increased, even ten times more powerful than before. Unwilling to yield, Nun Swan unleashes his own signature move, combined with the Way of Heaven's secret art, which can stimulate negative emotions in anyone affected by Nun Swan's spiritual power aura. Jin Kei explains that the weaker the individual, the more intense negative emotions they will experience. While Sun Rong remains relatively unaffected due to her strong spiritual power, Chan Chao and Gu Hao, who are much weaker than her, appear extremely frustrated, as does Er Ha, who starts losing his temper because the new demon world has been devastated by the fight. Upon seeing this, Wang Ling then uses purification technique to dispel Nun Swan's evil aura, restoring them all to their original state. As Nan Swan continues to belittle him, Master Yi then uses the extraordinary Sword of Earth technique, with Erha even commenting that the Sword of Earth is a truly great technique, almost on par with the Way of Heaven's secret arts. Nan Swan, seeing this, becomes annoyed because their master apparently taught that technique to Master Yi, but Master Yi denies it, saying he learned it on his own after their master passed away. Upon hearing this, Nan Swan becomes even more infuriated and remarks that no matter what, their master will always praise and protect Master Di, but he never cared about him at all. The scene then shifts to the past, showing Nun Swan asking his master, Fun Ru, about his reasons for choosing Master Di as his heir, even though he won the contest. However, Fun Ru asserts that he has made his decision, telling Nun Swan that he has strayed from the path he taught him. Fun Ru then recalls a past contest where Nun Swan and Master Di competed. With Master Yi, should have been the winner but chose to offer assistance to Nun Swan instead. However, Nun Swan, driven by ambition to lead the Infinite Sword faction, rejects Master Yi's offer and attempts to defeat him. However, because Fun Ru chose Master Yi as his successor, Nun Swan becomes furious and deliberately pushes his master off a cliff because he knows the abyss below them is bottomless. In the present, Nun Swan attacks Master Yi with his Sword of Heaven, but Master Yi withstands it. Master Yi seems determined to defeat Nun Swan, even if he loses his life in the fight, because he cannot let Nun Swan use the power of the Way of Heaven for evil. Knowing that Master Yi won't be able to withstand a second attack from Nun Swan, Wang Ling then activates the Immortal King mode in one of his eyes to absorb the spiritual force. Nun Swan, infuriated by this, intensifies his attack. Meanwhile, Shan Chao and Gu Ho become more excited by the lifelike theater performance. Gu Hao mentions that lottery winners are usually asked to participate as extras, which they thought about when Wang Ling approached Master Yi to help him confront Nun Swan. When Wang Ling arrived there, Master Yi looked surprised, because he never suspected that Wang Ling was the one with the Way of Heaven power in Faction 60. Knowing that Nun Swan would use the Way of Heaven's secret art for his final attack, Master Yi told Wang Ling that he would assist him with his Sword of Earth, because he thought Wang Ling wouldn't be able to match Nun Swan's power even though Wang Ling had used the same technique some time ago. Surprisingly, Wang Ling didn't need to exert much effort to thwart Nun Swan's attack, as he simply used the art of great purification to dissipate the attack. Wang Ling also easily shattered Nun Swan's giant celestial sword and defeated him. Afterward, Wang Ling questions Nun Swan's willingness to resort to evil for victory. Upon hearing Wang Ling's words, Nun Swan became enraged feeling as though Wang Ling was lecturing him, despite potentially knowing only one more of the Way of Heaven's secret arts. However, Nun Swan's anger turned to shock when Wang Ling revealed the Seal of Wei in his palm, a symbol of mastery over the Three Thousand Ways of Heaven. Even Erha was astounded by this revelation, unaware of Wang Ling's mastery over all of the Way of Heaven's secrets. Soon after that, the seven spiritual masters approached Wang Ling, then transformed into diamond fragments that merged with Wang Ling's hand. Upon seeing this, Master Yi asked what Wang Ling was going to do, and Wang Ling replied that he would eradicate the demon. 
With just a flick of his finger towards Nun Swan, Wang Lin then dissipated the demonic aura inside Nun Swan's body and completely defeated him. Shortly afterward, Wang Lin contacted Zhou Yi through telepathy and instructed him to immediately capture Nun Swan. Impressed by Wang Lin's remarkable strength, Master Yi urged him to lead the Infinite Sword faction. However, Wang Lin humbly declined, stating that he still had much to learn and wasn't worthy of such a position. Despite reverting to his old appearance, Master Yi expressed his intention to stay and repair the place using his remaining spiritual energy before passing away. Wang Ling intervened, offering to use his power to restore the place and extend Master Yi's lifespan by 500 years, allowing him to continue his quest for a suitable successor for the faction. After Wang Ling extended Master Yi's life by 500 years, Master Yi regained his youth and Wang Ling said that he would protect Faction 60 along with his friends. Upon hearing that, Master Yi expressing gratitude to Wang Ling and asked about the swordsmanship used by Wang Ling to defeat Nun Swan. Wang Ling replied that the sword technique was one he created himself and promised to teach the technique to Master Yi another time. Shortly after, Chan Chou and the others arrived, still excited by the outstanding theater performance. They also praised Wang Ling's performance and introduced themselves to the younger version of Master Yi, whom they thought was an actor. Chan Chao and Gu Hao then asked for Master Yi's autograph, and Master Yi gave it to them, while telling them to visit the place again another time. On the other hand, Soon Rong proposed a picnic there, which Wang Ling approved. At the same time, Shou Yu also praised Wang Ling's creation of a pleasant environment for Urha and the demons, expressing confidence in his ability to repair the place. Two months later, Wang Jiao and his wife were seen visiting Li for a medical checkup, because his wife had been feeling nauseous and vomiting lately making her weak. Wang Jiao appeared very concerned about his wife, but Li said that his wife's health condition was fine. However, Li also informed Wang Jiao that his wife was currently pregnant and congratulated him. Upon learning this, Wang Jiao was suddenly surprised because he did not expect his wife to be pregnant with their second child, especially since Wang Ling was already 17 years old. The moral lesson from the story, never underestimate the power of a packet of fried noodles because you might gain divine power after eating those fried noodles, ultimately getting the chance to be alone with your crush.